We spend so much time playing the same tunes over and over again, and I love it. It's great to have these tunes in your back pocket to play at jams or to play uh, by yourself on the porch at home or out and about, and it's fun to play those same tunes over and over again. I've enjoyed playing these melodies for years, but really what keeps them fresh for me is weaving in variations and finding ways to keep these tunes fresh and unique every time through. And what we'll do here is go through how I like to take a basic tune, one we've already worked on, Roscoe, and find the many ways in which you can incorporate your own style and your own variations. And this is really where I find Clawhammer banjo and the idea of going beyond the bum ditty really comes into play. No longer are you just trying to follow every note of the fiddle or play the same tune every way, every time the same way, but Rather, you now can play these tunes in a unique way for many years to come. And I never get tired of these tunes because I'm always looking for new avenues to take these melodies down. So what I'll do here is go through a number of concepts. So there are a number of things that I do to build variations into the tunes. And you have to work on each one of these variation concepts on its own. So instead of learning a real complicated version of a tune and hoping that those variation ideas seep into your playing, I find it to be more constructive and productive for us here to work on individual variation concepts that you can draw from, basically gathering tools for your toolbox of variation ideas. And when I'm playing through a tune and improvising and coming up with some unique ways of playing it, it may seem like I'm just randomly grabbing at different concepts. But really what I'm doing is taking advantage of all the time I've spent working on individual variation concepts so that they're ready for me at any given time. So let's go through some of the uh, most common variation ideas. And the good news is that you actually already have a lot of these in your back pocket. In fact, when I play a tune in a more varied, complex version, what I'm almost always doing is using technical pieces that I already know, hammer-ons, slides, pull-offs, and drop them. So let's just think about how you might take, let's say, Roscoe, we've been playing this tune, and um, finding all the places where you could add in slides. Let's start there. So the tune normally goes like this. I'll just play the first chunk of the A part. That's it. Let's just take a concept like slides. And you might be thinking, goodness, I've played that first chunk of the tune the same way for years and haven't changed a thing, and now we're ripping it apart. So what we're going to do here is take that first note and slide into it instead. So let's see where else we could add in a slide. That last note, second fret on the third string, instead of going, we went. Alternatively, you could go the other direction with the slide. Kind of a bluesy backward slide, that's an option as well. So you've got, or, a couple of options there. Then what you might consider is another concept, like, a hammer on. But before you do that, you might go through the whole tune with just the slide idea. Find all the places you can do slides. It can kind of sound pretty ridiculous. You get the idea? And after a while, it sounds pretty goofy. But the point is, there are lots of opportunities for these slides. You wouldn't use all of them, but what I just did there, that little exercise, as silly as it sounds, it's a nice way for you to kind of give yourself the uh, opportunity to make some educated guesses and to make some mistakes. A lot of the idea behind finding variations is experimenting, trying things, finding what works, finding what doesn't work, and then logging that and remembering what variations work for certain melodic passages. So slides, a nice place to start. Then you might consider doing hammer-ons. That's another really accessible one. So you could go instead of, you 
you just go. So taking those quarter notes, the low hanging fruit in the tune, and instead of just playing the quarter note, you just turn it into a hammer on. And you walk through the tune and find places where hammer ons seem doable. And you could do that for the A part and the B part. You can go to other tunes you've been playing for years and just experiment, try stuff. It won't all work, but some of it will work. And I think you'll start to get a sense of where these hammer-ons and slides can come into play. Pull-offs are also an op option. You could do that as well. Pull-offs are a little bit trickier because you, you have to start on a note and then you go to an open string typically. So you could try it. It's a little awkward there. But that does work. So you just try it. And like I just showed there, I didn't exactly know where I was going with it, but that's kind of the point. When you do these variation exercises of trying to just take one variation concept and apply it to the tune, it's much more palatable and uh, it's fun. It's a, like this discovery because what you're doing is you're creating your own style. And that's really what we're getting at here as we go beyond the bum ditty, thinking about how do I sound like me rather than just copying another version of a tune or transcribing it exactly as you hear it, well, that's a great exercise. I think understanding the nuts and bolts of why somebody sounds the way they sound, why Brad sounds like Brad or why you sound like you, a lot of that comes from the experimenting and the guessing and checking and the uh, trial and error that you put into your playing. That's really how you hone in on your style. And you have to allow yourself to make lots of mistakes. That's fine. No worries. Nobody's listening. I can't hear you on the other side of that microphone right now. <laughs> so go for it. Give it a try. And uh, there are more concepts. Like you can add in drop thumb. That part doesn't have a great amount of space for drop thumb. So usually I aim for the two bum ditty phrases. And we've talked about this already. You could do drop thumb there. And you can start layering them. And that's really the next step, finding ways to layer variations. So you can go, I did a slide and then I did the hammer on. Slide and then drop thumb. Hammer on into drop thumb. All kinds of different combinations. And that's how you're able to keep these tunes fresh. Once you get comfortable with each one of those variation concepts, and you have to probably spend a week or two on each one. It's not like they just happen in 10 minutes. I'm really breezing through this. But when I work on these variation ideas, I'll spend a good while focusing on just one of them, weaving it into my playing, and then I move on to the next one. And then you can start to just throw them in seemingly at random. When you get into other parts of the tune, It doesn't have to be particularly fancy, but just a couple variations here and there can keep it really fresh. And what we'll do here is take that tune Roscoe. I'll show you an arrangement that I've come up with. And while this does run a little counter to the theme of this and the idea that you aren't just trying to copy somebody else, the goal of teaching this tune that we're about to do here is to show you the variations that I might draw from to possibly give you some more variation ideas. But like I said, a lot of it is about experimenting and having fun with your instrument, not worrying about making mistakes. Uh, it's a whole new, whole new ball game when you're able to come up with your own versions of tunes, and it's really what keeps me coming back to my banjo over and over again.